Welcome back to Three Queens Cuisines. Um, what we're doing today is a homemade take on a crunch wrap supreme. Um, so this is first the ingredients that you are going to need in order to do this recipe. The first thing that you need are some flour tortillas. I like the large burrito size because you're able then to get the nice fold over that you really want to get for the crunch wrap. Um, we're going to take some lettuce and shred that up. We're going to cut up a tomato. Um, for seasoning the meat, I'm using chicken this time around, but you can use any meat that you want. You can use pork, you can use steak, you can use ground beef, turkey, whatever you like and just season it to your liking. I'm using uh, red enchilada sauce and diced green chilies. I really like the combination. I'm going to be taking a whole chicken breast and actually roasting it in the oven uh, at 350 and I'll check on it every 20 minutes or so to see how it's going. Um, next you're going to need cheese whiz or some sort of cheese dip. Um, that we're going to actually melt down and put inside of the crunch wrap but that's also going to help hold um, parts of it together. Uh, the sour cream is mostly for dipping afterwards or to adding it wherever you would like. And the last part is the actual crunch part. Now these are tostadas. Um, this is actually gonna go inside of it. So we're gonna need at least two wraps to make one crunch wrap. So I buy the eight pack of the flour tortillas, the burrito size, the bigger size. Um, what you're gonna need to do is have two because you're gonna have to cut part of it out from one that's going to be the top and then the other one is going to actually fold over and help hold everything together which I'm going to show you how to do. So I have a large cutting board out. I have two of the burrito sized tortillas. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one and we're going to take one of our tostadas. We're going to use this as a guide to cut out the right size. So just try to line that up to the center and with a sharp knife. What we're going to do is we're going to line it up around the tostada, try to hold it still, and cut the tortilla around it. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be about the same size as the tostada. Now that we've cut out the right size for our tostada, this will be your cap that will hold in everything inside of the other part of the wrap tortilla. Before we start any of the other fillings, we need to start with our meat. So I'm using chicken right now and I'm gonna use a full chicken breast to do this. So we're gonna hit bake and 350 and then we're gonna hit start. So that's gonna preheat our oven so that way when we're ready to cook everything, the oven will be nice and ready to start cooking. So for this filling, I'm using chicken breast. I've defrosted it from the, from the freezer and I cleaned it up just a little bit and now I'm going to season it. So I'm gonna take our red enchilada sauce and that's gonna go over the chicken. I've also washed the chicken before using it. Just give it a good rinse under the faucet we're going to put that over there, the entire can. Then what we're going to take are our diced green chilies, liquid and all, and we're going to add that in too. What we're going to do is we're going to help spread that out on both sides so everybody gets coated and spread that all around. So as it's cooking, I layered the pan with aluminum foil so that way whatever caramelizes and cooks down won't stick to the pan but will stick to the aluminum foil it makes for a lot easier of cleanup. There's a few different styles here that can be used in cooking the chicken. Um, we could add chicken broth, vegetables, and kind of almost steam it inside of the oven with a lot of liquid. Um, and then that way it would be a different texture, a different flavor to the chicken. Um, but since we're doing it 
inside of a wrap like this, I wanna make sure the chicken is flavorful so we can still use that sauce after it's done cooking when we shred the chicken up for the inside that we can use that sauce as part of the flavoring for the chicken as well. Okay, our oven is done preheating and we're about to put the chicken in at 350 degrees and we're gonna check on it about every 20 minutes or so. Because we're leaving the chicken breast whole, this way is a better way of cooking it to ensure that the entire thing is cooked. Um, unless we had cut it up beforehand and cooked it in the pan, um, leaving it whole like this, you run the risk of only the outside being cooked and the inside being raw. So by doing it in the oven, we're getting an even cooking and it will actually, um, cooking it that way also makes it soft enough that when we shred it, it'll shred in nice sized pieces as well and it will be very easy to shred. So I cooked the chicken in the oven for 20 minutes and then another 15 minutes. And this is what you want to see. You can see how it's cooked through completely. It's all white. You don't want to see any pink. Another way you can check is you can see the juices are running clear. So that's how you know your chicken is completely done. So this is going to be very hot still. So I'm using two forks and you can just pull it apart like this. You can get nice pieces out of it and just keep pulling it apart and this will be the beginning of our filling for our crunch wrap supreme. This is the pan that we cooked the chicken in. What we're going to do is after we've shredded both pieces we're just going to continue to mix everything in and we're going to let this sit for a little bit just so it can absorb all those flavors and we're going to have it cool down so it's a bit more manageable. So we finished shredding up the chicken and now what we're going to do, we're going to mix in all that sauce that we cooked it in. That's going to have all the chicken juice as well as all the sauce and the peppers that we... The sauce in here has the enchilada sauce and the uh, diced peppers and then it's also going to have the chicken juice that we cooked it in it's going to be all in there so we want it to get all those flavors together and then what we're also going to do is let this cool off so it becomes a bit more manageable so when we put together our crunch wraps um, we're not burning our fingers slightly easier ways to deal with a head of lettuce instead of trying to peel off layer after layer we have the core here what we can do is line it up with a surface, your table, your counter, two hands, and push. That way, now, the whole entire core just comes out. And you don't have to worry about trying to cut around it and deal with it. Just need a rough chop on our lettuce, so just make sure you keep the head together, watch your fingers, and simply cut. When we do it this way, we can then separate the pieces so we have it already shredded this way so it makes it easier to get more lettuce and to be able to spread it out throughout the crunch wrap the crunch wrap next we're cutting up our tomato always wash your tomatoes first and stand it up on the more of the flat edge and when you cut down you can see where it is cut down we're going to cut it in half so that way what we can do we can do a different sort of cut. We're just going to cut off the end there and we can do it in some strips. And then turn it around so all the parts are lined up and just cut into that as well. And you can get little dice pieces so we can sprinkle that throughout the crunch wrap as well preparation is the cheese sauce. I take a good amount, microwave it on about 30 second intervals if not less because it can burn very quickly and we don't want burnt cheese. We just want to melt it slightly so when we use it to hold everything together it's nice and melty. This is after 30 seconds in the microwave. It's nice and soft, not burnt around the edges. This can now be used to start building our crunch wrap. We have our tortilla out. I have a pan heating up 
we want to keep that on a low heat. We don't want to burn the edges on the bottom. We just want to brown everything to seal it, but also to help warm everything through. So we're going to start off. We have our whole tortilla down that we picked out. We're going to take a good amount of chicken. The amount of filling you put in is based on honestly how much you want. So we're gonna do a decent amount of the chicken in here, but we're gonna kind of flatten it. We don't wanna like pile it on. So that looks like a good amount. Then what we're gonna take is we're gonna take some of our tomatoes and we're gonna add those in just right on top like that. Try to keep everything in a small pile going. This way, when we fold it, it's not spread out so much. The next thing we're gonna take is we're gonna take some of our lettuce and we're gonna pile that on top of here too. It can also be however much you want. You can cut up the pieces a little bit more. We need to save as much room as possible so the rest can be used for folding over. So now this is where the crunch part comes in. We're gonna take our tostada, we're gonna take some of our melted cheese and we're gonna use that as a glue but we're also gonna use that, some of the seasoning and the flavoring inside. So we're gonna spread that out on here. And what we can do is we can also do a small dollop of cheese on top of here. Use that as some of the glue. Push down them just a little bit, not too hard. We don't wanna break the tostada just yet. And then for the top piece, a little bit more of the cheese as a glue. So this is the little piece that we cut out of the second tortilla. So we're gonna place that on top and that's going to help seal it so that way when it cooks, it looks like one tortilla. It may not always look perfect or be completely folded right, but what we just wanna do is we wanna tuck and then we're gonna bring up the excess and pinch it like that so we have that little piece there. And over here, we can do the same. Just fold it over a little bit, pick it up, and we're gonna hold it. So you just turn it and you fold and pinch. Fold and pinch. Fold and pinch. Fold, pinch. And the last one, however you need to get it to be folded to pinch. And then that's what it's gonna look like. That's the shape that we are going for. So now, as carefully as we can, since we didn't overfill it, we can take this. Of our pan has been heating up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our crunch wrap. We're gonna take it pattern side down and put it in the pan. I like to do it in a dry pan because otherwise it'll come out greasy. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna place it down, and we're gonna let it, let it sit there for about a minute or two so that way the underside becomes browned and that's going to help seal everything together. This is one of the reasons why it's so important to have your pan on a low heat. We don't wanna burn the underside, but we wanna make sure is that when holding it together, we have it sealed, but it also helps warm everything through. So the cheese will melt evenly. We warm the tomatoes, the lettuce, and we kind of rewarm the meat, even though it's still slightly warmed from being in the oven. We wanna help make sure that everything gets spread evenly inside, but also sealed on the outside. The best thing to do is to check it often to be sure that we're not burning the underside, but that it's actually browning nicely. So that seems like it's browned nicely enough that we can actually flip it and see now it holds together. So we don't have to worry about the filling spilling out and now we can brown the other side and continue to heat the ingredients through inside. One of the important things to remember about making the crunch wrap is if you're going to put more filling inside, you're going to have a smaller amount of edging available to fold up because it won't be able to stretch. This is cooked already, the, the outside is already cooked. 
so it's not going to stretch like it would a dough. So you have to be careful if you put too much filling inside, you could end up with parts of it ripping, not stretching, not being able to hold closed as much. So if you're going to use a loose meat, you have to be careful about how much you put in, like the ground turkey or the ground beef. When you get a good amount in there, it might spill through or it might be very oily and actually soak the bottom. So draining the meat is important to do with that. This way it doesn't soak through and cause it to rip open and spill everywhere. I've taken the crunch wrap out of the pan. The underside is done as well, nicely browned, just slightly. And now we're gonna cut it open so you guys can see what it looks like inside. And there you go. That's a chicken crunch wrap supreme with lettuce, tomatoes, tostada and cheese with inside. Thanks for watching.